The provisions of section 36 confer a power on trustees to be able to remove or replace the trustees in specified conditions. There's several different scenarios in which this section can be used. The main one that people tend to understand is that this is where a trustee no longer has the mental capacity to act within their role. As I'm sure you are aware, when we talk about mental capacity, we talk about mental capacity in accordance with the Mental Capacity Act 2005. And if a trustee is not able to undertake their obligations under the Law Property Act, Section 22, there is a requirement that they must be discharged from the trust in question. When you are making an application to the Court of Protection for a replacement trustee, because we cannot use Section 36.1, you have a specific process. And I've listed the forms that you would normally require when making these applications. You always have to have an application form, which is called a COP1. And then there are supporting documents that you have to submit as a replacement trustee application. And this is in a COP1D and lists this information. It also ensures that you are submitting the correct information to get your application through as quickly as possible please make sure you submit this with your documents or else they will return it to you and ask you to fill in the COP1D and return your application again and you'll go to the back of the queue. Final things that they ask you for, well, they will ask you for a schedule of the trust assets. So you don't necessarily have to give a valuation, but they need to know you've got a bank account with X, we have this property, we have these stocks and shares. It is not a formal requirement. However, my recommendation is to actually draft your own court order for the court of protection. And I recommend this in any application that you do, ladies and gentlemen. And this is because if you draft your own order and submit it to the court, they can see in very specific terms what you are asking for. And so they can look at, oh, you want this person to be appointed. It sets out clearly what you are requesting. But more importantly, for those of you who have never seen a court of protection order before, there are certain sections at the back of the order that usually stay the same. And they deal with costs. They deal with uh, reviewing and appealing an order. And these, of course, can be pre-typed into a template for you. When it comes to costs in the court of protection, um, we have a certain procedure of whether or not we're going to take fixed costs or assessed costs. And I think there's a big uh, question mark in terms of how to do this. And there are potentially things that you can do on your court order.